Hi, I'm Jack Shilly and welcome back to another garden update. Um, apologies that it's taken such a long time to do another one of these. Um, basically, the garden has just been unworkable. Um, we've had absolutely torrential rain uh, and then we had a bit of a cold snap where we had um, a few centimetres of snow. Then it went back to rain and now we've had a really, really cold spell with a few bits and pieces of snow here and there. Um, I think, though, looking at the weather forecast, that hopefully things are going to improve moving forwards the next week. They're even talking about potentially 11, 12 degrees, and then by next weekend, even looking at 15 degrees, which for February is fantastic, um, and definitely improvement on the minus six that we had, um, that my greenhouse thermometer tells me was outside the other night. Um, whilst outside at the moment for today it's still very very cold um, it's only just got above freezing now uh, it's about one degree out there um, i don't think it's getting any warmer than that today uh, and everything is frozen solid the grass is frozen the veg patch i don't know if you can see is still covered in ice and the residual bits of snow that we've had and it's just unworkable still out there now having said that um, there is still um, a few bits and pieces we can be getting on with in the greenhouse particularly as in here at the moment it is eight degrees um, so it shows the greenhouse is still working outside it's only one or two um, and i know some of that will be my residual body heat but when i first came in it was still reading six degrees so it's definitely warmer in here and what that means is we can start to get some of the hardier crops sown under glass under protection so that by the time the soil has thawed out hopefully in a week or two's time uh, they'll be germinated and they'll be ready to plant out ready for a nice early crop so what i'm going to do today is i'm going to hide in here because it is far too cold to do anything else outside and i'm going to show you um, how i'm going to plant my brussels sprout seeds and my pea seeds they're the first two that i want to get started and then probably um, as we move forward into the week um, i might look at sowing my carrots and a few other bits and pieces but we'll see what the weather does and see what the forecast longer term holds um, but for now i'm just going to show you um, what I'm doing with those and how I'm growing them just so that you can hopefully replicate this at home and get your uh, first seeds in which is also very exciting for the season um, but also get them off to the best start ensuring you have a nice early crop later in the year. So let's get started. So the first seeds of the year going in for me um, as I said are my Brussels sprouts um, so this is a variety called Bedford. Normally you'd sow these outside in um, early March uh, to April but I'm wanting to try and get a successional crop of these. Now what this means is that we'll have a supply of Brussels sprouts right the way through the season. So to give me a head start on this, I'm going to be sowing them into one of these seed trays here. And what that will do is it will get them off started in here. It will let the ground thaw out outside and give me a chance to really prepare it nicely for them. Then I can prick the seedlings out, plant them straight out outside once the risk of any further harsh frosts have gone. So we're probably talking uh, early April for us here. And then that will mean they'll be really early. I can then sow another batch when they're going into the ground, which means that by the time they're ready to harvest, the next batch is growing, and then the next batch is in the seedling stage, and so on and so forth. So, um, as I said, I'm going to sow them in here, and all I'm going to do is just fill this seed tray with a seed compost. Now, seed compost is um, basically just a very fine uh, type of compost. Um, it doesn't have a huge amount of nutrients in it, because the idea is that they don't stay in their seed soil for too long and they either get planted out or potted up. So do bear that in mind. And it's also very free draining because one thing that does affect seeds is particularly at this time of year when the day temperature uh, can still be quite low and the days are still fairly short, although they are getting longer, is uh, waterlogging and dampening off. So it's important to make sure that your seeds don't sit wet and that they don't sit cold. And so the greenhouse here is perfect because that will protect them from the worst of the cold and the rain. And also this seed compost being free draining means that they shouldn't sit in water either. Now, if there are any lumps and clumps in there, because um, inevitably you will get a few, um, just break those up with your fingers. And then you'll want to lightly press it down leaving probably a couple of centimetres at the top because you want to finally put a sprinkling of soil back on the top 
and also when you water you don't just want the water running off the edges you actually want it to go into the seed tray itself so try and make sure that that's as level as possible that's looking pretty good now just removing the large bits of those clumps <laughs> and i'm going to put my brussels sprout seeds in now the seeds for the brussels sprouts will be quite small as i said this is a variety called bedford which is a slightly smaller brussels sprout size but apparently very nice to eat and those are the seeds there as you can see they are quite small and you just want to thinly scatter those on the surface making sure that there is a reasonable amount of space between each one particularly with things like peas and brussels sprouts they don't like a huge amount of root disturbance so the more space you can give them between the seedlings when you then come to prick them out there's going to be less root disturbance for the other plants that are still in the seed tray and therefore they're going to hopefully establish better so i'm going to save the rest of those as i said for my next sowing which will be probably in maybe four to six weeks time and as I said, I'm just going to thinly pop a layer of soil back on the top. Space that out all the way to the edges and lightly press down. You don't want to compact it too much. Like that. Now this seed compost is feeling actually quite damp to me, so I'm not going to water it. But if yours is feeling particularly dry or you've got a heated greenhouse or you're growing them indoors, then it would be advisable to give them a water at this point to make sure they don't dry out. Because if it's soil's dry, they equally won't germinate. Make sure you label them. So I'm going to pop a label in now, pop the date on there so you know when you sowed them. Um, particularly useful for successional sowings. And that's pretty much it. Germination should take 7 to 14 days, possibly a little bit longer if it is cold um, but you should start to see those sprouts come through soon and then they'll be ready for as soon as the soil and conditions improve outside to give you a nice early crop and then next up as i said to get started today are uh, my peas so um, these are called early onward um, and as the name would suggest they're great for early cropping peas um, at the beginning of the season but they, if you do want them um, right the way through then definitely choose an early variety and get them in now so you can get them started now peas definitely don't like root disturbance so i'm using these um, individual cells and i'm literally going to put one pea plant in each and then what you can do is you can just push up very gently from the bottom um, because you don't really want to be squeezing the sides or anything like that and that will just pop the plug out and you can gently place that in the soil outside once it's prepared and then off they'll go i've had great success in growing them this way myself um, and um, i'll be interested to hear what you guys think and whether you've had any success i know lots of people use uh, guttering pipes to sew them in um, and all sorts like that so again i'm using the seed sewing compost and they want to be reasonably full because what you'll do is you'll create a small um, indentation into the surface of the soil using a dibber or your finger to actually pop the seed in itself okay and as i said you can either use your finger or use a dibber or any kind of utensil but all you want to do is just make a small probably about a centimeter no more than two centimeters deep in each with your seeds you just want to now these just look like shriveled up uh, peas you would get from your freezer but that's absolutely fine you just want to drop one into each of those cells giving them a little gentle nudge to get them in like so and then all you're wanting to do is just push some of that soil back over the top so that it's completely covered just like that 
and it really is that simple. And germination on peas can take a little while, so we're sort of looking maybe um, at 14 days, possibly a little bit more again when it's cold. Um, and they don't like to dry out too much, so just keep an eye on the watering again if you're sowing them indoors especially. Um, I'll give these a little bit of water, just a quick mist, just to make sure there is some moisture in there because that helps the seeds germinate. Generally speaking, they're quite a big seed, so when they do germinate, they will require just a little bit more water anyway um, because the plant is of a larger size. And that's it. Um, and again, make sure you label them, pop the date on there. And as I said, within sort of 14 days, you should expect to see those shoots coming through and you'll have lovely early plants ready to get out in the garden as soon as you can. They're quite hardy anyway, so if we do get a frost after you put them out, that won't set them back too much unless it's really severe. And then they'll give you a really good early crop and that will last right the way through the season so long as you keep feeding and picking them. One other job that I'm also doing this weekend, uh, now that we have got some much milder conditions in the forecast, is I'm going to unwrap some of my really tender plants, which you might have seen I put fleece over um, because we were having such low temperatures, you know, possibly even down to minus eight. I don't think we actually got that cold, but still, um, some of these plants are just a little bit tender and I've had them for quite some time, so I really didn't want to lose them. But with temperatures, you know, not showing that they're going to go back into uh, negative figures for at least the next week or so, um, you can quite safely take this off. So. I'm taking this off here. Um, this is my grevillea. Now, grevilleas are a beautiful plant, um, possibly considered subtropical. This is a hardy variety called, I believe, Canberra gem, but it has lovely red flowers very early in the season, actually. Um, and I'll do a close up, but this is budding up beautifully at the moment, and it's going to be a really vivid red colour and it always flowers really early for us here. Um, I don't know why, whether it's the cold season and that brings the flowers out, I'm not sure. But this is Grevillea um, and I've just protected it and it's actually looking fine. There's a few buds that look like they've suffered unfortunately, but there's still plenty of buds to come on there um, and some of them are starting to colour up. So within the next couple of weeks, that's going to be looking really lovely actually. Um, next up is this cytisus and it's got little beautiful yellow flowers again an early flower loads of buds on it at the moment and it's looking really fantastic actually so the cold hasn't affected this one at all which is brilliant um, and again um, flowers really early in the season but also has a lovely kind of citrusy pineapple-y I don't know it's a lovely scent um, that this plant has really really beautiful and then the final plant that I've got to unwrap, the rest, everything else here is hardy and it seems to have pulled through quite well, is my sago palm. Now sago palms generally don't live outside in the UK. This one I've had for a number of years and I feel like it's hardened off a little bit um, because it tends to go through the winters very well. But with the threat of minus eight, I thought I might lose it. I think, however, under here... It's doing absolutely fine, which is great. Yeah, doesn't look too bad. A few little bits of yellowing on there, but that's to be expected. What it does, this particular palm, uh, is it flushes only once a year. So this would be 2020's flush of fronds. And with a bit of luck and some feed and some gentle coaxing, hopefully it will flush again this year and you'll get another set of these beautiful fronds later in the summer. Um, but this is, as I said, I've had this for a number of years now and it does very well outside. I'm very lucky. Um, but I do keep it tucked up against the wall throughout this time of year, as with the other two as well. And that's pretty much it, really, for this weekend. If I don't want to touch the veg plot as soon as it thaws, the ground still might be quite cold tomorrow, might not be worth doing much with it. So I'm going to give it a few days first to allow those temperatures to really warm up and to allow the soil to completely thaw. And then what I can do is I can start adding some fresh compost in there. I can start adding some garden lime, which I'll talk to you about what the purpose of that is as well. Um, and for now, as I said, it's just too cold to do anything else. I've got the first seeds in and uh, I've unwrapped the plants. You don't want to keep them in the frost fleece for too long if you can help it because it does affect the light getting to them. 
um, and it just improves plant health if they're out in the open. Um, <coughs> also, I would say with this, you can reuse it, so don't just throw it away. You may well need it again if we have another cold snap, so store it somewhere dry and it'll be fine to use again. Thanks very much for watching. Um, I'll be back next week with another garden update. Um, hopefully these have become more regular now that the temperatures are, are heating up and we're getting more towards the growing season. Um, and I hope that today's video has been useful for you. Um, as always, if you've got any questions, comments, or want to find out more, uh, all my social links are in the description below. Um, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on the future garden updates. And I will see you next time.